Calls for restraint and a stop to the violence are coming after a number of assaults on Japanese businesses. For more, here's our contributor in Beijing, Nicole C. In Qingdao, a factory owned by the Japanese electronic company Panasonic was set on fire, and the Toyota dealership was also looted. In Guangzhou, demonstrators smashed windows at a Japanese-owned hotel, and in nearby Shenzhen, an anti-Japanese protest ended with scuffles with the police. These anti-Japanese protests continued this week, which marks the 81st anniversary of Japan landing in Manchuria, a part of China. On Sina Weibo, China's version of Twitter, an angry and insulting post reads, Kill the little Japs. But here in Beijing, the first large protest in front of the Japanese embassy seemed well controlled, almost directed by authorities. I talked to Eric Fish of Sinostand.com, who was there. What happened was uh, the Japanese embassy was on a street and all the roads were closed off to traffic. And there was a partition down the middle and police were just directing people to parade in big circles around the partition. Um, and then they would let them stop in front of the Japanese embassy and they would uh, curse at it, make chants, and some people threw eggs, threw rocks. I saw one cell phone be thrown at the uh, embassy. Uh, and there was actually, somebody had put out a big basket, said, uh, rage eggs, uh, everybody take two. So people had taken eggs that were out and chucked at the embassy. That was a bit intense. The Hong Kong newspaper, Ming Pao, reported that plainclothes police used bullhorns to announce demonstration rules. Do not carry water bottles or anything like that. Remember to sing the national anthem. Everyone must take part in chanting slogans. Facial expressions are to be serious. No laughing. Don't play with cell phones. Maybe the, the chants that I was most surprised to hear were uh, Mao Ju Si Wan Sui, which means long live Chairman Mao. And there's actually a lot of uh, pictures of Mao floating around. I asked a couple people about this, and they said, well, if Chairman Mao was here, he would never allow this to happen. Uh, so. There were chants like, long live the Communist Party, but there are also a lot of people that were saying, oh, the government uh, needs to grow a backbone, they need to take a tougher line. And there were chants for war. Um, some one chant was, declare war, declare war. Um, so it was, it was getting pretty intense and pretty angry. Editorials and commentaries in the early part of this week from official mainstream media like the People's Daily called for civilized protest and condemned violence. It may be that people are too hyped up now, though. For Link Asia, I'm Nicole C. in Beijing. Japanese social media users are expressing puzzlement and a little contempt over the Chinese protests. This post quoted an acquaintance from China. My friend told me that even people who don't know where the DLU islands are are participating in anti-Japanese protests. And this one criticized the Chinese for stealing. China, you looted around $12 million worth of goods. It's theft, not protest anymore. Another post read, a Chinese intellectual said, this anti-Japanese protest has a problem. Idiots, posturing as patriots, got together with poor people aiming at thievery in a ludicrous farce aimed at diverting public attention from China's domestic affairs. I agree with this opinion. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.